Hello and welcome back to the next Unity tutorial video. Today we're going to go ahead and make an endless runner. Um, so to start we're going to go ahead and import the package that goes along with this video. You can find this package on our website and there will be a link in the comments below to direct you there. So once this finishes importing I will move through the directory structure that you will see and explain some of it. Um, and then we'll get to the coding. Okay, so you see that there is two main folders, menu and world. And in menu there's only a scripts folder, but we will be writing some code for our menu. And then in world there is a bunch of other subfolders, like our skyboxes, which just has a skybox that you can get from the normal Unity um, import. Um, we have our ship, and we have our player, which is just one of our, just our ship. Um, we also have an empty scripts folder for the world folder, which has nothing in it, along with a prefab for the world. Um, and then we have our chunk folder, which is how we're going to build our world. Um, and this also has scripts, obstacles, and ground, which will all have their own code if necessary. Okay, so let's get to coding. So we're going to go ahead and make our menu first. So go to the menu scripts folder and then create a new class called menu. And then we'll open this up in model develop. Okay. Um, so our menu is not going to use any of this. It is going to have an enumeration called game states, which will be menu and game and then we will have a game state variable that will hold the state of our game um, menu okay and then so we're gonna have two main menus, the game menu and the uh, actual menu. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do on GUI, which is a Unity function, to use the GUI commands. Um, and we're going to go ahead and make a button, give it a, rect a rectangular position on the screen, which is just going to be screen width divided by 2, screen height divided by 2, uh, 130, and this button will say start game. Okay, so after we save all of that, and we can come back to our game, delete that camera, create an empty game object called menu, and then drag our menu script onto it, and click play. And you will see that there is a button. It does not do anything yet. Um, so, we are going to want to make this button do something. But first, we want to use our states, our game states, in order to determine what menu is seen. Uh, so, in the case that we are in our menu, You will see a certain thing, and in the case that we are in our in the game itself, we will see something else. Okay, and then we're going to make two functions. Menu. And then we're going to call each one of these in here. And then we're going to copy this guy and move him into the menu. 
Um, we're going to call this game menu. Okay. So when we click this button, we are also going to want to change our game state to game. And then we're going to need a reference. To the world, or a, a reference to the prefab of our world object. So go to world, resources, prefabs, and you will find the world prefab. And we will just drag this guy in here. And then we are going to go ahead and have another variable called. Oh. Um, we're going to instantiate our world first. And this will be done at vector 3.0 quaternion.identity as game object. And when we do this, we're going to switch into the game. Um, in the game, all we're going to do right now is show a label, GUI.label, and this will be 00, 0 130, and we'll just say score for now. So if we come back, fix this error. Um, so we need to assign this guy. Okay. All right. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and click play. And now we click start, and we will see that our world comes in, and our new menu comes in. Um, so let's turn this guy off and drag in a chunk prefab. So if you take a look at our chunk, it is a large block that has a bunch of obstacles in it. Um, so it also has this collider around it to determine when the player ship will go into the into a chunk. Um, so what we're going to want to do here is go into obstacles, into scripts, and we're going to make um, a couple of randomization scripts to randomize our levels. So we'll go ahead and create a script called prune, a script called colorize, a script called rotate, and a script called shift. And each one of these scripts is going to do a very minor thing to a specific cube. So let's go ahead and open up Prune. And so this guy is only going to have an awake. And he's going to have a public int prune rate. Which will set to zero, and we will have a case where we will delete this object if the prune rate is underneath a certain random number. Um, so if random dot range between zero and one hundred, 
greater than our prune rate. And then we will destroy game object. Otherwise, this thing will just destroy this to remove the script from the object. So if I take this and throw this on a specific cube, and say 25, click play, you will see that the cube disappears. some of the time um, that should be correct. <laughs>